Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be making a dragon. I made the wings and the body off camera. It took me quite a bit of trial and error, so I didn't want to bore you with those details. But I'm really glad you guys are back. And let's get ready for today's video. I'm covering the body with polymer clay that I already conditioned. This is original Sculpty. Uh, I don't would recommend this one to anybody only because it's uh, very crumbly and it takes very uh, conditioning to do. But um, this also it has to do with the age of the clay. And I know that the properties of Sculpty vary depending on what brand you use. So I generally would go with something else that they have. Um, probably the Sculpty medium one that they have, or maybe even the, the really light colored one. I forget what that one's called. It, it looks like it's made for making dolls. And I do apologize about my voice today. It seems to be that like my voice would go from raspy to uh, just being okay, I guess, or what would, would it be okay for me. But, um, yeah, it just, it does that. I don't know. Uh, anyways, so I'm just covering the tail only because it's the easiest part for me to start with and I figured, you know, let's start with something easy. But yeah, you guys are probably wondering why we're not continuing last week's uh, project. Well, uh, I accidentally let it dry out, so I was trying to rehydrate the clay. <laughs> uh, but like how you do with the uh, ceramic clay. And so I was trying to do that and yeah, it, it just uh, did not like the hot glue, uh, the moisture did not agree with the hot glue. So I had to uh, basically throw that whole thing out and start this whole new thing. But yeah, also, <laughs> sorry about not uploading yesterday. I'm still trying to figure out, uh, the, you know, filming and editing, you know, while trying to study for grad school and everything else that uh, involves life. But yeah, hope you guys don't mind. Anyways, we're moving on to the rest of the body, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let you guys listen to some music while you guys watch me speed run through this. Yeah, what would be the fun in that? <laughs> so now, like, as you can see, like, I've pretty much um, uh, covered all of the tail, and now I'm starting, uh, starting <laughs> on the rest of the body. And I jump around and, you know, obviously, you know, if you guys have uh, been with me for the last couple of videos, you notice that I tend to do that. I go from one area to the other. It doesn't matter if I'm coloring or painting, uh, you know, or even with ceramic, I mean, with ceramic, with polymer clay, I, I just like to hop around, I, I guess, cause I get bored and I figured, you know what, I'm going to go over here. I used to get uh, in trouble with that with my teacher when I would like rotate the piece of paper when I was coloring. She's like, you will never be a true art. You'll never be a true artist if you keep doing that. Well, uh, maybe she's right, <laughs> but I mean, it's just how I, how I do things, and I feel very comfortable with it. I I find it easier to color, and you know, when I'm um, uh, what do we call it? I'm just rotating the piece of paper. But yeah, anyways, uh, so we're just gonna be filling him in, and uh, I. But later on, I'm going to regret not noticing that one of the legs was thinner and kind of crooked than the other one. And yeah, I, I actually, I did notice. I will say that I did notice. I just didn't think that it would matter. I, I just left it as is. And later on, you'll see why I should have just gone ahead and redone the leg. But yeah, I mean, this will be a project that I will definitely revisit in the future. Overall, I you know, was pretty happy how it turned out. <laughs> uh, I will probably have to figure out where I went wrong with the center of gravity too and how to make that like stand up on its own because it wasn't having issues with it. Uh, the only reason that I was leaning up against the jar at the time was because I thought it would make it easier to, uh, you know, press the clay into it. I figured, you know, with that added force of me pushing the clay in and trying to smooth it out and rub it in, um, would only uh, make the legs pop off or tip over. So this was just really just to protect the piece. Um, but yeah, so the wings were, um, very difficult for me to do. The only reason that would be because I, I don't know what I did with the right wing, but somehow the, the left wing was a lot more cooperative with me 
then the right wing and I accidentally wound up making two wings as you can see from uh, last week's video these are like uh, just been recycled and I'm applying them to this project I figured you know I can't make a dragon frog but I can make a flying rain or worm I forget what you call the dragons with no arms because I know they're technically not actually they're not even a dragon uh, if they don't have arms, they're, they're called something else, and uh, for the life of me, I cannot pronounce the name. Those of you that know how to pronounce it and know what I am talking about, if you just want to go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below, that would be so appreciated. <laughs> but yes, that's what we're making today. And uh, yeah. Okay, so now uh, you can see that the I'm having issues with the tail staying on. So I went ahead and uh, added more clay to reinforce it. And when I baked it, that seemed to pretty much fix the problem. Although in the future, I think I will be building a base of wire inside the body, like as a skeleton. And then the aluminum foil will um, act as the muscle and the, the fat to uh, bulk out the creature and then the polymer clay obviously being like the skin and just because uh i think the wire would have really helped here with some of the other issues that i was having and this is really like a, just a trial and error but now that i i covered the whole body in clay um and you can see again like the the details are starting to emerge and i've i think i've at this point i've read ahead and pre-baked it too and uh the bag in the back has some other effects and i'm just going to give you a quick panoramic of the dragon just so that you can see how it's turning out so far and uh, yeah you can see that like now i am resting it on its butt and <laughs> he sits there but we're gonna make those caprichons for his eyes now went ahead and used black acrylic paint paint for his irises and then i'm gonna go ahead and use some uh, iridescent blue nail polish and then i'm gonna use some green to add for their a sparkle to his eyes and uh, I like nail polish just because you know after watching some videos on the effects that acrylic paint does versus a uh, nail uh, polish I like the way the nail polish looks better it just looks more realistic and it adds that added sparkle glitter so now I got ahead and added one eye and I'm going to show you how I did the other one now in this case I don't like how the second eye came out as much as the first one only because I kept trying to figure out what was it that I liked so much about the first eye and it wasn't until later on in the sculpt um, when it was too late to uh, add this detail that I noticed what it was. It's because the way I did the upper and uh, under eyelid I had the under eyelid slightly come under the upper eyelid and uh, it gave it that much more realistic effect. So in essence, I think what I did here with the other side is that I didn't make the top lid come down far enough. And so when I did the bottom lid, it just looked like it was like an upside down eye. It still looked one looking good. Uh, I just didn't like it as much. Again, this would be just like something else that I revisit in the future. But, um, you know, as my first sculpt, I'm pretty happy with like the um, experience that I had with it. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm gaining from it. I think that it's uh, a lot of fun. And yeah. It was really nice to make a huge piece <laughs> that was like a, you know, just something that like I had only thought about like, well, is that really smart? But bulking it out this much, you know, really helped because if you, if you make your polymer, polymer clay too thick, it explodes in the oven. That has happened to me before. I think what I was trying to make was a tree. Actually, <laughs> I was making this resin piece on a piece of wood and, uh, I twisted the aluminum foil to look like this warped, uh, tree trunk. And I don't think I boxed it all in enough. And then not to mention the added uh, uh, things that I added to it because I was making like, like a crystal gem thing. And it just went 
boom in the oven. And at first I was like, what is that? For like a split second. And then another split second goes by. I'm like, no, as I realized what it was that would exploded in the oven. And so I, I came back now. I'm more worried about my piece being destroyed in the oven than like, did something happen in my oven or anything? Cause I live in an apartment. So I would have to replace it. But yeah, I was more concerned about that. <laughs> oven was okay peace wasn't it basically just went uh like shrapnel all over the place it was horrible um but yes uh, it was so sad so i wound up making it out of air dry clay and it wound up looking pretty good it didn't uh work out as a tree though and that's like again something else i'll have to revisit i have since then seen uh videos on how to do trees with uh, clay and it's basically like you make the wires and then you add in the moss to make the leaves yeah the way i tried to do it, it was just basically <laughs> like a like a trunk of, of aluminum foil and then like this big old ball of aluminum foil sitting on the top and i had even done it with like a wire armature in the inside and it just <laughs> you know hindsight is 2020 but i didn't realize that that was not gonna work in a uh, polymer clay or clay you know it's just it's not the same yeah so we're just adding some scales on his uh, back and his head uh, for the, like the added effect and dimension. I think it makes it look cool. And yeah, I really like how it looks in, in the end with all like the little uh, scales coming down his back. It, it To me, it just uh, really gave it a touch of like, um, I don't know, depth and character. Yeah, it really helps to tell the background story of this dragon. I really would, uh, would like to create an environment for him. But again, because he's already... I would say a little bit under two feet because um, he barely fit in my oven when I picked it. Like I had, I first I tried laying him down on his belly because I thought that would be the best way to go. But I realized that like, you know, since this was like a multiple bake thing because I had added details and stuff, I wanted to bake um, as I went. Uh, the wings did not like that at all. So once I figured out that if I just sat him on his butt, that the wings would be okay, uh, I just started doing it that way. But then, you know, it, it cost me like room in the oven. I was like, I don't know if this is going to fit. And lo and behold, it just barely fit. Like it was maybe like two centimeters away from touching the uh, upper coils so that would, would, you would use to broil in your oven. It was so close to touching that so now i'm just using air dry clay uh to add um some further details uh in this case his feet only because at this point i wasn't willing to rebake him and um i i was just worried about the wings because i had already repaired the wings uh quite a few times so at this point uh, again this is my first time working with wings i will leave asa clay's video in the uh description below so that you can see uh how he does his wings and you know his version of a dragon only because i, I feel like his is much more in depth and he has more experience uh, i went ahead and followed a lot of that to make my own dragon here but yes i i'm using air dry clay just to uh add some details to his feet so they don't look like two like big old flat sandals anyways Here's a close-up of me adding details to his mouth so it doesn't look like he's missing his dentures anymore. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm rolling out a snake of clay. Ah, look, look at me. I'm referencing ace of clay. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, and that's to make his tongue. And I'm going to go ahead and add his gum line too so that I can um, poke little holes in it at some point to make the teeth. And for the teeth, I wound up using polymer clay again and risked another bake, but that was the last time I baked it. And so I went ahead and used polymer clay for the teeth. And uh, that part too was uh, used for his horns. Again, I made those off camera just because I was uh, debating quite a while if I should even try risking another bake. Uh, because uh, at this point, you can tell that uh, when I repaired the wings, if you look closely at this wing that's showing right now, I went ahead and used super glue and uh, baking soda. Now, when you mix baking soda with super glue, it acts as a cement and it becomes really strong and it cures instantly, but it also lets out a lot of heat. So um, I figured that was like the best route to go to repair the wings and I didn't have issues with it afterwards. And I think that's also what saved the wings when I went in ahead and decided to do another bake. 
And anyways, so yeah, I did the teeth out of a mixture of Pearl uh, Sculpey 3 and I used a uh, Kato translucent clay. Now Kato is a uh, very, very smelly. Uh, I did not like working with it only for the smell and it is extremely hard, like it almost, in, I would say inhumanely hard. You know, as dried out as my original Sculpty was, it was nowhere near the firmness of the Kato clay. I am so glad I had a pasta machine to um, work on this. Um, but yeah, so this is the dragon. And uh, as you can see, he is uh, out of the oven and he has his horns on and he has his teeth. And yeah, um, now I'm adding more air dry clay to add final details. And I decided to go ahead and make him a crystal dragon. Maybe it had to do because I was thinking about that crystal tree and I didn't want to let it eat me. <laughs> but yeah. And for the crystals, I used uh, air dry clay to add them in. Again, because in the past when I have used these crystals, uh, I got them from Michaels. I don't know what kind they are. Um, I'll have to tell you guys about it in the description box. But anyways, uh, I used them um, in the oven before with polymer clay and they just wound up dulling out. So I figured it was best to just uh, use air dry clay. Uh, to add those crystals in and all I did was I molded some air dry clay onto the legs and various parts of the body and just shoved some crystals in there. Shoved some crystals in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it, it would just wound up working out for me in that sense. So now uh, we got a close-up of his face and as you can see, um, the teeth turned out pretty good and I didn't use bacon bond like I should have. Uh, so over time, we will see if those teeth hold up, but for now they are. If they don't, I will just use E6000. Anyways, so here's a panoramic shot of the dragon. Join me next week to see the paint job that I go with for this dragon. Leave a comment below if you have any suggestions. But yeah, I'm so glad you guys came back for another video. And uh, again, I apologize for it being a late upload. But I really appreciate you guys' patience. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Alright, see you guys next week. Bye!